Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Please join me in welcoming two first-time competitors at the Masters, Elvaro Ortiz and Takumi Kanaya. Welcome. These two outstanding young players were victorious in tournaments that continued to blossom as part of our Grow the Game initiative. Alvaro earned his invitation with a victory in the 2019 Latin America Amateur Championship in the Dominican Republic this past January, and Takumi was victorious at the 2018 Asian Pacific Amateur held in Singapore. I'll begin with Alvaro Ortiz. Alvaro, welcome again. You have played brilliantly in the Latin America Amateur Championship, twice runner-up before claiming your first victory there in the DR this past January. Tell us, if you would, if you had the opportunity to play Augusta National since that victory, and then tell us some of your feelings and emotions when you came down Magnolia Lane as a participant in the Masters. Oh, yeah. Uh, I had the opportunity to come to, uh, all five times that I was able to. If not, I would have probably lived here for the past two months, but um, it was exciting. I had never been here before. Uh, first time I got to Magnolia Lane, I, I was lucky enough to share that moment with my dad, which made it more special. And yeah, it was, it was just astonishing, you know? You've dreamed about it, you thought about it uh, ever since I'm a kid, especially like, you know, sharing golf moments with my brother. We've been thinking about it and you know, driving down, it just gave me the chills. And it just to come back here as a player too, it's uh, this week, it's, it's amazing. And I'm really lucky to have this opportunity. Yeah, we're so delighted to have you. And uh, Takumi, you said after winning the Asian Pacific Amateur that going to the Masters is one of your greatest dreams. Could you share with us your emotions and feelings about coming down Magnolia Lane as a participant in the 2019 Masters? Mr. Satomi. マスターズベルトに本当に夢に向かいだっていうことを答えたと聞いたんですけど、今回まあこのプレーをできるということでマグノリアレーンを初めてこう通った時の気持ち、そういう気持ちを教えてください。I'm so happy to come here. I'm so excited. でも日本語で答え僕が訳します。Conclusion. <笑>どう、どう、だからそのマスターズに来て、ま、今の気持ちを教えてくださいってことです。その初めてこう、あの、マグノリアレーンを車で通った時とか、その初めて選手としてマスターズ出られるっていうことについてどう思ってますか。え
I remember since I was a kid, I, I preferred to play soccer over, over golf. But luckily, I stuck to with this sport and ended up here. Um, I think my first one to my first family member to start playing was my grandfather and my mom's side. And then my mom, my dad, and my two brothers started picking up. And I think it was just, uh, I mean, it was it came like that to me. And I start, uh, I grew up playing since I was like five years old, six years old, and started taking seriously when I was 13. I came to the States one year for to a junior academy, uh, developed my golf there, and then from there it's just been, I've been going upwards with my, with my golf game and um, went to college, and then I'm here. Uh, Joy? Uh, I have uh, two questions for Takumi. Uh, I was there at Sing in Singapore when you won the Asia Pacific Amateur Championship, and you said that it was the best tournament that you have ever played in your life at that time. What do you think now, now that you are at Augusta National? Singapore the cup この初めてメジャー出るし、この試合は小さい方が夢だったんで、ここで結果出したいなと思います。Of course, this is my first major as a, a, to, a dream that I've had since I was little to, to play in the Masters, so I'm just uh, excited to be here. So I think uh, Hideki San was one of the first person to congratulate you when you won the Asia Pacific Amateur Championship. Have you had any chance to interact with him on the golf course and have you had any, you know, kind of advice from him about the course and how to play it? アジアマカップ I have uh, played two days with, uh, with, with Hideki um, uh, here, and he's taught me many things. Uh, you know, don't hit it here or, or hit it here, and, the, and there will be a slope that will bring the ball back here. So he's taught me a lot about the golf course. John? Uh, questions, if I could, for both. Uh, I'll roll first. Just what have you been doing since... Uh, you win at the Latin American Amateur. Uh, I know you graduated from school, so you're done with school. And what are you going to do after uh, this week? Because I know there's some talk about uh, making golf your profession. So curious in those two questions. And then I'll ask, if I may, over there. Uh, I finished school last May. Uh, I was lucky to finish. Uh, glad to finish, too. And uh, since, since my win, uh, I've been doing pretty much the same thing as I was doing before the LAC. Um, I think just preparing the same way, maybe mentally a little bit different. Uh, I've never experienced a major crowd or or the feelings or the emotions. I'm gonna they're gonna be presented to me in the first tee on Thursday. So just trying to visualize that moment and try to feel comfortable with that. And uh, I'm gonna turn pro in seven days, Monday after the Masters, and try to get some exemptions. I'll play anywhere and just pretty much. Just trying to get any start so I can get out there to the tour. And um, just me, I'm just I'm curious how many times uh, have you played this golf course? Just twice with Hideki, or have there been other times that you've gotten to play Augusta National? It came Friday and that was the first time played. Doug? Lovato and two questions. When you first played this golf course and stood on the first tee, was there one hole that you couldn't wait to get to and why? Oh man, I think there were all 18 holes that I couldn't couldn't wait to get to. Um, but I think there were a couple in my mind that really I really wanted to go there and see if they were that hard, like number 10, number 11. And 12, 
uh, especially Amen Corner. Everybody talks about Amen Corner, and everybody wants to just go see it and the flowers and everything. It's just it's special, you know. Um, but I think it, Eleven was the the hole that shocked me the most. I thought the T shirt was harder, but it just the, the second shot. What it requires is just it's a really good golf shot, a quality golf shot to to be able to have like a thirty footer, a forty footer for birdie. So I think that that hole was probably my favorite. Do you, do you think your master's experience uh, this week will be complete if you don't have a pimento cheese sandwich? A, a what? That might be the problem. A pimento cheese sandwich. Oh yeah, it's everybody has talked about that, but actually, I've received more about the I've received more um, arguments about the barbecue, the chicken barbecue sandwich, which I think is pretty good. I already tried that one, but I have to I have to try the pimento cheese. Fernanda. Alvaro, um, we're very really proud to have you here competing at the Masters. It was a huge thing for our country, obviously, for Mexico. Um, but what would be for you a, a successful Masters? What are your real expectations this week? Well, it's it's hard to answer that question because I've received a couple, you know, recommendations from players like Jonathan Vegas or Russell Knox or a couple of guys that have been here for for a couple of times and. They told me just to come out here without expectations and without expecting anything, just trying to accept the week, how it goes, and whatever, however I play. But I, in my mind, I, I mean, I'm out here to compete, really, and I, I want the green jacket. That's why I'm here. I, I think every player is like, it's thinking like that at least. And of course, winning the low amateur would be nice. Uh, making the cut would be a really good finish too. But um. I mean, if you if you give me a top ten right now, I'll sign it for sure because I'm coming back next year. But you know, I ca I want to go out there and just and just have fun, enjoy it. I'm here with my family, and um, I feel like it couldn't be a better week to finish my my amateur career. So I'm happy with whatever way I play. And Lee, just a quick question: How special it was to play with Sergio today? He obviously knows the course very well, and we see you talking with him a lot today. Yes, Sergius and I are really nice guy. I really like him. He he's friends with my brother, and he really knows the place. He really knows how to get around, and especially just the the way they kind of like set themselves up for like the next shot. It's not about a, hitting it close or like driving it to the perfect spot, but it's just more about how how can you set yourself the best way to not screw up, pretty much like not to make a, a bogey or to have any blemishes in your scorecard. And I think he he's really good at that. And, and the way he showed me around the, the, the greens and around the greens, especially some chippers, like it just everything is really, really out tough out here. So the advice I got for him, it was, it was really good and I appreciate it. Grant? Alvaro, were you able to follow what Maria Fossey did uh, on Saturday? And also, uh, I think the Razorback men were here playing a tournament and we're gonna come out today. Some of them, did you see any of them today? Yeah, um, I wasn't. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to follow Maria, but I saw her the whole way on TV. And um, I was fortunate enough. My second time that I played it, the the course, Fred Ridley, the the chairman, had a like a shootout with his friends, and they put all Sunday pins uh, out there. And it was really nice to like play them and see how the slopes work, uh, see how can you attack them, how can you be aggressive, and which ones not, and all of that. And I think overall it's just it's just such a challenging track that you have to be so patient out there because maybe in one hole you can have a five footer for birdie and end up with a bogey, and the next one you have a sixty footer for birdie and you end up walking with a birdie and just situations like that I feel like you just have to be really calm and and patient out there. Todd, Alvaro, um, the the Latin America impact on uh, you know kids' dreams of being in the Masters. Do you think that that's changed, you know, the outlook for kids in Mexico? And also, there's still the economic barrier to golf for some in Mexico. How do you see that changing over time? Yeah, I, I, I had said this before. Uh, what uh, the Masters Committee, the USGA, and the RNA, what they did with the Latin America, um, they really um, they put like an incentive for us Latin Americans to to try to work harder, just get better at it. So um, you, you don't get to 
you don't get to play a tournament every day to to qualify in the Masters. And what this has done for us is just it just makes us work harder, makes us uh, you know better players for sure. And I think uh, it's not just in Mexico that uh, the golf has been growing. I think it's been in all Latin America. You can see Chile too. They have come out with great players in the last couple of years, Argentina, Brazil, and all those countries too. It's just um, it's just special for us that um, we've been playing with all Latin Americans since we were little kids, and it's awesome to see our friends do good too. Yeah. Ignacio? Uh, for Takumi, uh, how far you were today with your second shot and then ninth hole? Takumi Cuba no second hole, nine yards no cotton. Two hundred and ten yards. Tisha hit a tree, so <laughs> I imagine it was a great shot. <laughs> John? Uh, again for each of you. Uh, Takumi, I'm curious, do you have family and friends here with you that have traveled uh, to be with you here during this tournament? And for both of you, are you staying in the crow's nest one night or any nights, or how's that organized? <laughs> My family is coming to watch this week. And tonight I'm going to stay at the Crow's Nest. Same. I think, I think every, although every amateur is staying today at the Crow's Nest since his amateur dinner. Joy? I just ask you, you were you had almost six months you had to wait for six months for the masters to come unlike Al Alvaro who had just wait you know three months how difficult was it to just wait for this day to come since winning the tournament Singapore the Katakalukagetska after, after I won, um, I thought, man, I have six months to wait. But 2019 came and, and it came by quick, and you know, I knew there was only four months left to wait, and so now it's come quick. Doug? For Takumi, um, when you first started to play golf, who had the bigger influence on you in Japan, Iro Shikawa or Hideki Matsuyama? Ichiban,その、ま、ゴルフ始めてから、あの、一番の影響になったのは誰ですかと。石川選手か、松山選手か。うん、両どっちもトッププレイヤーなんで、両方他にもたくさん日本にはいいプレイヤーいるし、いろ
And I was lucky enough that last, it was like 10 days ago that the, the greens were somewhat firm and really, really fast because of the jamboree. So I was just lucky enough to get a feel of what the tournament's gonna be like. Just one thing, you, you said you had texts today, or you had messages today from people or encouraging you for this week. Uh, whom, uh, was there one that was notable to you or, or uh, stood out in your mind? Uh, yeah, actually a couple of my friends sent me a video together. They're like uh, six of my friends. They <laughs> they made a video of them singing, but uh, it was really funny. And just friends from back home, they're, they're going to be here to support me this week too. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for being with us. Uh, and gentlemen, thank you very much for being with us also. And we wish you the very best luck in, in your first master's appearance. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Outstanding.